Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, this session. Taveen is not going to be able to make it today, but we do have her recording. So we're going to start with that. And then Stacy will share on massage. And then there'll be question and answer where Stacy can answer your questions. So I'll start with the healing touch video and then that'll be for 20 minutes and then we'll transition to Stacy. Okay. Hi, my name is Tavine Kirkpatrick. I'm a registered nurse at Keck Medical Center of USC. I'm really excited to be presenting on Healing Touch for the USC Institute of Integrative Health. Um, and I'm excited to share a self-care experimental um, experience at the end. So I really gravitated towards Healing Touch with the energy medicine modalities available, mostly because it was developed, developed by a registered nurse and um, each level provides CEUs for nurses. It's about 24 hours for the first couple levels and then um, it kind of expands from there. But it's, it's pretty great in um, some of the simple tips and tricks you can use as a nurse and as a caregiver. So um, I highly recommend it. So we'll go ahead and start with um, the PowerPoint and I'll go ahead and share my screen. So um, energy medicine, energy therapy, it does have a lot of different names. It actually, um, it's believed to go back several, several centuries, even as far back as Jesus's time when, you know, it's believed um, the notion of laying of hands, they connect that to energy medicine because um, in providing the therapy, you're utilizing your hands and exchanging that energy flow and opening up blocked areas. And so one thing that a teacher once had us do was rub our hands together, which I encourage you to do now, and then just kind of feel the warmth and the energy that is kind of created between the two hands. So the belief that, you know, I have that's taught in this is that there is, you know, energy within our body, around our body, and a lot of times those energy centers get blocked. And so this is kind of a therapy, one of a few that can kind of help open up those different exchanges of energy and channels. So uh, you may also be familiar with Reiki. Reiki is, um, stands for soul, spirit, and key is the vital energy. They actually utilize this um, practice at UCLA. They train their nurses in doing that. And we actually were using it at Norris as well. So it's also a really great one. Um, there are different forms, have it be the Japanese form of Reiki or the Indian form. And I'm not going to go into too much there, but um, that is also another form of energy therapy, along with chakra balancing and Qigong. Qigong is more of the movement where you're moving your body to help the energy kind of flow um, and help open those channels up. So when we're talking about energy centers, they're also called chakras, which Sanskrit word meaning spinning wheel of energy, and there are seven in our body. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but each one does have a color and many um, healing touch practitioners actually see colors when they're practicing. Most of us will feel more of like the heat and cold sensations or just kind of energy flow, like a vibrational feeling, which is what many of us will feel, but some actually do see the color, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the seven chakras, the first one is the root chakra, and that's our most basic kind of grounding chakra, which connects us to the earth, which is where trust, foundation, family kind of enriches from. The second one is the sacral chakra, which is right here. It's where sexuality and creativity kind of stem from. And so um, that also the second chakra is connected oftentimes to the fifth chakra and the third is connected to the sixth. And so the truth is they're all connected, but they do find more like stronger connections between certain two. 
Um, the third chakra is a solar plexus chakra, which is the color of yellow. Um, here it says wisdom and power, but it's also very much known for um, where our emotions are kept. And so when we're going to give a presentation or do something that's kind of gut-wrenching, we'll say we feel butterflies in our stomach or you know, our stomach will feel upset. And that's because that's where our emotions, many of which are held. The four chakras are heart chakra, um, the color of green, love, healing, um, all that great stuff comes from. The fifth chakra is our throat chakra and it's the color of blue. And that is where we communicate from, um, have our voice heard. So that's that one. The sixth one is a third eye chakra, which is really more so intuition and awareness, just having kind of that connection to inner self, inner being of knowing when something feels right or wrong. And then the seventh chakra is our crown chakra, which is up here, um, kind of belief of connecting with the outer spirits, the um, higher self, that connects you to all of the universe. And I know we all kind of have different terms or beliefs that connect to that, but that is where the seven chakra resides. So um, just to kind of touch on some of the research that's out there and that research does continue to grow. The first one is a lit review that was done with therapeutic touch, which is very similar to healing touch. Um, with cancer patients, noted improvements with health status. Also, this next one is with healing touch during antipartum hospitalizations. So during childbirth, they saw reductions of 83% in pain and 91% in anxiety. A uh, randomized control trial had patients receiving traditional nursing care or traditional nursing care with healing touch post-op, and they found um, decrease in the use of narcotics with the healing touch group. Then we have healing touch on post-bariatric surgical patients found it to be feasible, acceptable, and improved pain, nausea, and anxiety. Um, the next one's osteoarthritis patients received healing touch sessions for three times per week for six weeks or a weekly friendly visit. The healing touch group had improvements of nine out of 12 of their outcome variables, which is 75%. And there were no significant improvements occurring in the friendly visit group. And finally, um, a randomized control trial looked at healing touch on pediatric oncology patients. Those in the healing touch group showed decreases in scores for pain, stress, and fatigue for participants, parents, and caregivers. So the really beautiful thing with Healing Touch is, you know, as you're providing this therapy, um, the child in this situation is relaxing, which actually brings relaxation to the parents as well, being receivers, seeing their child in a state of relaxation. Um, and, you know, it's really therapeutic for the caregiver too. I can say that firsthand, where as this energy is flowing and you're balancing, uh, another person's, you know, flow of energy is actually also making you more mindful with the flow within yourself. So this is the self-care um, chakra connection, which we're going to do together. And I am actually going to also put a link in the chat, just so you have um, like a PDF source to it. Um, if you ever want to kind of save it to your desktop. I actually highly recommend this during um, mornings before you get out of bed. It's great or anytime you're feeling really stressed. So when um, you're doing your assessment with Healing Touch as a practitioner, it's the thing I liked about it is it's a very nursing approach and that there's a pre and a post assessment to the care that you provide. And the pre actually includes using a pendulum to see if the chakra fields are open or closed. And so of course the individual would be laying down and you would just put this over them. And so I was actually checking this out before I did this and I found my sixth chakra was actually closed. Let's see. So do you see how it's going back and forth? Does it make that a full circle? So when it's open, it actually makes a full circle and it goes in um, a clockwise fashion. So as you can see here, my heart chakra is open. And so it's making the full circle. 
And so that is a sign. Ah, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Got a lot of love to give. So um, that's a sign that the chakra is open, but then on my sixth chakra, my intuition is just showing that it's actually closed. So signs of it being closed is that it either will not move, it will go counterclockwise, or it'll make this kind of like zigzag shape back and forth, like a confused kind of shape. So that's kind of what I was seeing with that one. So before you would start, you would just check all the chakras. I don't really do this when I'm doing this for myself, but it is something that you would want to um, practice on the person you're providing the therapy to. So um, another thing before you start as a practitioner is kind of grounding yourself. And what I do is before I give a public presentation, I encourage you to do this as well, is I first ground myself by imagining there's roots coming out of my feet and I'm kind of like grounding and centering myself to the earth and then I also like to envision myself becoming more or less kind of like a vessel that energy can flow through so I try not to kind of hold on to what I'm going to say or do and I just allow myself to kind of be in a vessel to let whatever needs to be said just kind of flow through me and so I do this as well before I start any sort of um, healing touch session and so it's it's important that you kind of just ground yourself to the earth ground yourself to yourself see kind of how you're feeling where your emotions are at before you even get started because it kind of just helps helps things to just flow I do encourage you before we start that you put your video off um, if you like, that's definitely an option of blank that out. And I encourage you to close your eyes because it does really help you center more. Um, the guide does say to hold each position for a minute, which we don't have time for today, but we definitely will give it about 20, 30 seconds and I promise you'll still feel the difference. So we'll go ahead and get started. You could either be sitting or laying down. Both are perfectly fine. Your comfort is what's most important here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get in a comfortable position, either sitting or laying. Close your eyes and just kind of center yourself. Take some deep breaths, center yourself to the earth, to yourself. Just come into this moment, come into your body, see how you're feeling. Release any sort of stress or tension you might be holding in your shoulders. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with our feet. So go ahead and put your hands around your right foot, close your eyes. So as we start, we also send in addition to our mindfulness and our attention, we are sending love and gratitude to all these different areas of our body. So our feet, our feet are what carry us through the day. That is something that is very easy to just take for granted. So giving gratitude to our feet, massaging it a bit if that feels good to you. And just feeling the warmth from your hands spreading. All right, and you're going to take your right hand and move it to your right knee and put your left hand on your left ankle. Just take some nice easy breaths. You may feel some warmth flowing from one hand to the other. The whole idea with energy therapy is that these hands are kind of what's helping the flow of this energy move from one area to the next. Now you're going to take your left hand to your knee and your right hand to your hip. So your right hand is just right on the side of your hip and your left hand is on your right knee. Take 
And now you're going to move to your other foot. You're holding your left foot with your hands, just giving it some love, massaging it if you'd like, giving it gratitude. You may feel some tingling in your right leg with some heat sensations moving through, different sensations. Just be aware. Be aware of what you're feeling. All right, now you're going to move your right hand to your left ankle, and then your left hand will go on to your left knee. So we're encouraged to hold these positions for one minute. Um, for the sake of time, we won't be doing that today, but just Recognize the longer you hold it, um, the more you're going to feel the effects of this therapy. You're going to move your right hand to your right knee, and then you'll slide your left hand to your left hip. And then you're going to move your right hand to your right hip. And then from here, we're going to start moving through the chakras, opening up the different chakras. All right, so you're going to move your right hand to your first chakra, which is your root chakra, and then the left hand will go right above it, the sacral. So as we're moving through these, just being aware of the different chakras and their purposes. So here we're focusing on the root chakra. You're welcome to kind of move your hands around in the different areas that we move. And then we're going to move the, the right hand on the bottom up on top of the left. And so now I'm covering the sacral and the solar plexus, the second and third chakras. You're welcome to rest them on your belly or keep them a few inches away. So they encourage you to hold each position for a minute or until you feel some sort of energy flow, energy opening. Now you're going to slide your left hand to your spleen, which is right here on your side. Keeping your right hand where it is still, move your left hand up to your heart. Now we're doing the third and the fourth chakra. So the third being emotions. Fourth being our heart. Focusing on love, love for ourselves, love for others, gratitude. And then we'll move this hand up above the left to our higher heart. And then we're going to focus on the arm. So we're going to hold a wrist just like this. Giving gratitude for our hands and all that our hands do for us day to day. And then just slide it up to your elbows. And your shoulders. The shoulders are nice because it feels like a nice hug that you're able to give yourself in this moment. Again, it's nice to do this just laying in bed before you get up in the morning. It's a really nice way to just get the energy flow moving and to start your day. 
and a little self-care and self-love that we all can use during this time. Okay, now you're gonna bring the right hand back to your high heart and the left hand is gonna to go to your throat chakra, which is your fifth chakra, the chakra for communication. When we're talking with the fifth, sixth, and seventh chakras, those have higher energy. So it's really important you don't rest your hand on any of these areas. So always keep a few inches away from your skin so that um, there's more room for that energy to flow because it is a higher frequency chakra. Now you'll move your right hand, which is on the high heart, up to your sixth chakra, which is your brow. So another thing is when a chakra area energy centers close, you'll feel it to be a little more cool, not as much warmth. Um, I've found if I kind of just like move my hand around in that area, it really just helps the energy flow. All right, now I'm gonna move my left hand up to on top of my head. This is the crown. Finally, the right hand, which is on my brow, is going to move up to be at my feet. So it's actually um, the palm is facing up towards the ceiling. And there's the final position. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And you can rest your arms down on your knees. It's really important at the end of any sort of healing touch session um, that we ground ourselves or ground the person we're practicing on. Rubbing your shoulders or rubbing your feet are the two best ways for grounding. So at the end of the therapy, if you're practicing on somebody, you would check again to see if there was any sort of change in that energy field. So that this look a little bit more open even in that small bit that we did there. Thank you so much. I'm excited for our Q&A later. I wish I had more time with you, but I want to be respect respectful of our time and I look forward to connecting soon. Thank you. I am Stacy Rosenthal. I am a RN bachelor's prepared. I'm also a massage therapist. I also do healing touch and have been to Veen's partner in crime. Um, for I think six years now, um, where she had contacted me, I helped create the Integrative Health and Healing Program at the Veterans Administration Hospital in West Los Angeles. So there we brought in Healing Touch as a modality for our nursing staff to bring to bedside care. And then later we added on outpatient clinics to come and receive Healing Touch and Comfort Massage. As a massage therapist and nurse, I'm able to form the two together. So where Tavin was going to go with this, she warms her hands up and feels the energy. You can feel a pressure or a sensation by going back and forth. So that's the basic energy that we take healing touch from. Because it's evidence-based, we are able to uh, obtain CEUs as RNs to then utilize this in the clinical environment. So you're taking that same energy and you're gonna channel it. And we will do a basic meditation of the intention of taking this healing energy that you have along the major chakra points or energy points spinning chi that your body has. There's around 80,000, but we focus on the uh, seven biggest ones, starting with your ground chakra, which is approximately in your genital areas. So if you take your, your energy and focus your thoughts to that, I'm gonna have you place your hands on your knees and hold that point. Gently feeling the warmth and the energy transferring from your hands to your knees. As you get comfortable, feel the comfort of the chair supporting you. 
where your bottom touches the chair and your back touches the back of the chair or if you're sitting on the floor or on a bed. Feel the support that you have. Take a deep breath in. Focus your energy through your hands, sending healing touch to your knees. Taking a deep breath in. And back out. Continue the intention of the energy into your knees. Deep breath in. and out. And in. And out. And hold that point, continuing to breathe in and out at will. Check in with your body. Do you feel any pain anywhere in your body? Acknowledge it. Thank you for being there. And take a deep breath in and out. Slowly move your right hand to your right hip and then your left hand to your left hip and breathe in. Focus that healing energy to that now new hip and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Feeling the warmth and vibrations coming from your hands. Your inhale intention is focused energy through your hands to your hips and exhale. Inhale, focused energy through your hands to your hips and exhale. You're going to move your right hand slowly to hover above your groin, keeping your left hand on your left hip. Focus a deep breath in, some energy towards both points, and exhale. And inhale, deep breath, focusing your energy to both points, healing touch. And exhale. Slowly move your left hand to join your right hand. You can layer on top or create a triangle. Again, on this particular point, you are hovering over your, your groin. This chakra is your grounding chakra to the earth. So as you breathe in a deep inhale, focus your energy healing energy to that point and inhale and exhale.
and inhale. Focus energy to that point you are holding. And on your exhale, visualize that energy going down your legs into the ground like the deep, large roots of an old oak tree. Inhale up, bringing with it the energy from the earth, the energy from your spirit, your guidance, your deity, and focus your healing energy to your grounding chakra. And exhale. On your next inhale, you're going to bring your right hand to your abdomen, your solar plexus, a center point. Take a deep breath in. Hold your energy there and exhale. Deep breath in. Focus your energy, healing energy coming from your hands to your point, both points you're holding, and exhale. On this next deep breath in, bring your left hand to meet your right hand, this time creating a triangle. Hold that energy on your solar plexus and breathe in. Focus on sending healing energy to your abdomen, your solar plexus, the center of your being, and exhale. Hold this point for a couple breaths on your own. Breathing in and out with focused energy. And in and out. Focused energy. Take a deep breath in and out. And one more deep breath in and out with a sigh. <sighs> I'm gonna check in right now. If you're a practitioner where you're able to lay hands on patients, these are excellent ways to help calm a patient from anxiety, from stress, helps induce the quality of sleep. It can help calm somebody with dementia or anxiety who doesn't understand words anymore or what a word means. You just lay your hand slightly on them and you focus your energy to them. For those of you who felt pain prior, check in with yourself right now. How is that pain? Is there a difference? Is the intensity lower? If not, I'm going to do an exercise right now. So the area that you have pain, Say it's your low back. You're going to place your hand on your low back. You can put your other hand there or you can do this with one hand. You can put your second hand on top of your crown. So on top of your head, which is where universal energy comes. And you can accept the universal energy by turning your palm up and having the energy come through your hands through your spine and onto that point. And take a deep breath in, and you're gonna focus 
the healing energy to that point of pain. So breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in healing energy. Focus that energy coming through your hand, sitting upon the pain that you have. And breathe out. Breathe in healing energy. Focus that energy onto the pain itself, sending healing thoughts, healing energy to that point in which hurts, and exhale. And continue for three more cycles. On this next breath in, breathe in. You're gonna slowly draw the pain away by moving your hand slowly off the point of pain, breathing it with you, and exhale while shaking it off your hands, and exhale. Take a deep breath in and out. And in. And out. Healing touch is an excellent way to help calm somebody who's in critical care, who can't receive manual manipulation where you can transfer energy from yourself by protecting yourself with the visualization of purple around your body, your being. If you think of having an aura around you, I'm not saying you have to believe in auras, I'm just saying if you visualize yourself embedded in a purple aura, that is a protective mechanism that helps with channeling your energy to somebody else's and not taking theirs on. I used Healing Touch with patients in high-end substance abuse uh, recovery centers where because they still had heroin in their body and high uh, levels of it, we did not do massage, but rather we did the energy work which helped them to relax, helped some of their cravings. I'm not saying it's a miracle worker. But during the acute detoxing, it was able to help calm them, soothe them, and get rid of the cravings in that moment. It is excellent, as I said, for critical care. It is excellent for people who have dementia. I personally have used it on patients who have Alzheimer's or are status post having a stroke where they have expressive aphasia and get very frustrated with not being able to verbalize what they're thinking and staff being upset that they can't understand what the patient's saying, able to calm the patient down and be able to communicate with them where it's refocusing their thought process. It is still expressive aphasia, but the ability to calm them down help them to be able to use the additional tools that speech therapy gave them because they were no longer agitated from their own frustration. So check in with your pain again. Is the pain dissipated? Has the intensity lowered? Take a deep breath in and out. I'm going to go ahead and start the presentation on the therapeutic massage. Your questions can be answered. Alex is monitoring the session. So if she feels she's a physical therapy student, if she feels that it's pertaining to what we're talking about, 
I will be able to answer your questions immediately. And if not, the last 10 minutes or five minutes, whatever you are in need of, will be able to answer your questions live. So Johns Hopkins University describes therapeutic massage um, as incorporating a variety of advanced modalities that enhance the body's natural restorative functioning. Light to firm touch is used to release tension, relax muscles, increase blood and lymph circulation, and impart a sense of calm. Therapeutic massage can be used as a collaborative, supportive addition to conventional medicine treatment of illness and injury, alleviating pain and stress, aiding soft tissue healing, and revitalizing the body. Also, regular massage can enhance health, providing relaxation, release of muscle tightness, relief of anxiety and tensions, and balancing aspects of body, mind, and spirit. In my own practice, even with patients in the hospital, in the bed, in critical care, or other units, I incorporate both the energy work, the healing touch, and massage. It does, as I said earlier, increase the quality of sleep. It does decrease stress. It increases a positive mood. It increases the circulation. And it assists when we're talking clinical in such things as peristalsis and decreasing patients with dementia and Alzheimer's. There are some um, contraindications with people and we need to pay attention to that. You need to know if somebody's on a blood thinner, if somebody has a flu or flu-like symptoms because of the toxins in your body, it can increase that flu. Contagious diseases, well, kind of explains yourself. Yeah, certainly don't want to catch anything. Um, blood clots, because you don't want it to become a PE and end up in the lungs and possibly creating much larger medical complications. Kidney and liver um, conditions are something that you would talk with the MD, because if the MD is supportive of having the massage, the massage therapist would then utilize the appropriate type of massage. Maybe it's lymphatic drainage as opposed to a deep tissue massage because you don't want to damage the tissues and send toxins through the body, especially when the kidneys and liver are already in a state of uh, crisis. As you can see, there are other um, contraindications. For surgery, I generally stick to the rule of if the surgery has been within the last six months, the farther out it has been, if it's in the six month period, I would ask my client if it's a private massage to have their doctor approve it. And if it's in the hospital, it's really easy for me to get the MD approval right then and there. Recent burns, because you don't want to massage bad skin where it could injure the patient again. The next two slides are just a sample of the different types of therapeutic massage. And I know in the program it talks about that this is self-care. So as we're going through this, you can actually do a lot of this to yourself when trained. As an RN, the California State BRN does allow me to utilize massage on my patients provided that I have certification and there is a competency that went along with it. Not all hospitals and clinics have policies, so always double check with your own local policy as to uh, what you're allowed to do in the clinical environment. So hot stone and ice, obviously there's heat and there's cold that are being brought in. Different aspects of inflammation can be worked with the ice. And the hot stone warms up the muscle, in, excuse me, faster and deeper way. So here are the different varieties. Cranial sacral works with gravity and the alignment of the body, but bases itself on the scalp and the spine. There's a lot of finger walking that can go on, the palpitations along the sutures of the head, the skull, and um, sometimes there may be two people working on you at the same time. One may be at the head while the other one works down the spine. Lymphatic drainage works with your lymphatic system. It's really easy, you can do it to yourself. 
and circular motions or small strokes. It is a very light touch. It is not deep tissue. It can increase your urine output for the next two hours or so. So be aware of that if you're working on somebody who has water retention. Neuromuscular follows the nerve tracks. I use this in sciat sciatic nerve work where I follow the entire sciatic nerve chain starting off with L3 and I'll work that area down into the glutes along the um, hamstrings into the quad or calf excuse me and into the foot so i follow the entire nerve chain and in that i would then go backwards and go up from the foot i actually follow it all the way to the shoulder because i'm six feet tall i'm able to go on most people the foot to the neck and follow it all the way in, back into the upper part of the body Lomi Lomi is quite interesting. It's a traditional Hawaiian medicine. When I've had this done, the gentleman who worked on me was uh, around six feet tall and would actually walk on me. He does use a large um, staff to keep his balance. He did do prayers and it was extremely interactive. You will not fall asleep during Lomi Lomi. Shiatsu is based on over 354 points where your thumb is utilized to press down on trigger points that go along your body, usually working along the uh, meridians outlined in uh, Eastern medicine. Aromatherapy is the addition of aromatherapy to the massage and can be used with any style of massage. And trigger point acupressure and reflexology is an extension of shiatsu often utilizing in reflexology, the ears, the hands, and the feet as the primary um, components of the massage where the massage is provided. Thai massage is very much incorporated with bending, twisting, and stretching from the practitioner of the client. It is not often used in the clinical environment because they literally will be walking on you, twisting you. Prenatal and pregnancy massage is very much related to exactly that. It um, is recommended that you wait until the third, or excuse me, second trimester begins. I used to work for an OBGYN. For her high risk preg pregnancies, I was actually the order that she would write, and I'd go to their homes and give a very soothing, very light massage. Uh, prenatal pregnancy massage does require additional training because of the trigger points that are on the mother. Uh, sports and instrument specific. Sports obviously uh, are massages that are geared towards that sport. So golf, there's a lot of hip and shoulder work. Football, depending on the position, may have a lot of low back work and feet. Um, if you play the drums, it's a lot of shoulder, arm, and neck. So depending on what's going on, these two are excellent. Swedish is what most people think of when you hear massage, relaxing. Somatic massage is the partnership of psychotherapy and body work. A true somatic massage um, is usually done with the psychotherapist. They can do it alone or with the partner where one works purely on the psychotherapy component and the other one works on the body work component, it is done at the same time. Rolfing in deep tissue, rolfing is very specific and has advanced training and works on the alignment of the body and um, has to do with the gravity. A lot of people that may have shoulders that are cattywampus because of life, not because of other conditions, Rolfing can help with the correction of those items. So I'm gonna get into some items where you can actually apply these to yourself. I know nowadays, especially in COVID, we're online all the time. We're typing, our hands hurt, numbness and tingling in the three fingers can occur, the pain. So there are different ways that you can do it. The forearm, and again, you can do this to yourself or you can seek somebody else out to help you. So 
Sorry about that, everybody. All righty. So with carpal tunnel, the main focus is on your forearms and your hands. These show um, specific points that you can work within. I know physical therapy is very big on these exact same points, so you are able to incorporate it on yourself with self-care. Walking up your fingers with your thumb and your index finger and giving slight tension helps too. It is contraindicated in pregnant women, especially this point where the palm is being held. That is an induction point. So if somebody is pregnant, it is not, it is completely contraindicated to do that point unless you're inducing and that you would want to be full time term. So a success story that I have is I work on a storyboarder for a, a very successful TV show. He also plays guitar. His name is John and he would come in with um, hand pain, shoulder pain and neck pain. So I would spend three hours with him on a regular basis in one massage, focusing on the hands, the neck, the arms, the shoulder, the upper back and the jaw. And from there, his successful story is he was able to work at a much higher capacity and his pain intensity decreased and was able to live pain-free for quite a while. That's why I would see him every three months because his work didn't go away, but his pain definitely subsided. Deep tissue is excellent for sciatic relief, as I said before, so I would follow the chain from the L3 down and to the foot and back up. The position that this young lady is in right now is the soothing component. It would not be deep pressure going towards the foot because you wanna keep the deeper pressure going up and the light pressure going down. The fact that the ankle is in her hand would allow me while I was going up to add the deeper pressure while I brought the foot towards the table and that helps work the muscle. The muscle is active at the time that I'm providing the massage. The bottom, let me get my head out of the way here, is excellent for menstrual cramps. Again, you do not want to do this while somebody is pregnant, but if somebody wants to become pregnant, this is an excellent spot to work within. It's the middle of the gastrocnemius, and you would warm up the calf and then hold that point. Now, it is a pain point, as it indicates there in Eastern medicine. Some points are stimulated and cause pain, and that's when you know you're on the correct point in Eastern medicine. This point actually is a pain point. Again, it is contraindicated while pregnant. So this shows the map of part of the body where I'm talking about meridians earlier. This is one meridian where I could work on it for the stomach anywhere along this meridian. In acupuncture, these dots are where the needle would be placed to help with the stomach point. A success story with the deep tissue for the sciatic nerve is when I worked on the psychiatric intensive care unit at the VA. A young man named Mark came in after six years of living in pain. It coincides with his six suicide attempts that eventually led him onto the psychiatric care unit. When talking to him, he said the reason that he wanted to die and tried was because of the pain that he had in his low back after being in combat. I assessed him. I was able to uh, get his lidocaine cream that he was prescribed, and I gave him a 30-minute massage. When we were done, I had incorporated the deep tissue stretching and uh, pressure. He got off of his bed and gave me a hug, contacted the head of psychiatry, and he said, I just saved his life. So that's an excellent success story. I don't know how many of you have TMJ, but you can do self-massage for the TMJ. It is external and internal. It is excellent if you have headaches that are frequent 
You can do this to yourself as well as having somebody do it to you. A lot of times headaches are tension, so check in with yourself. I personally will have my patients and even myself just put my tongue between my teeth. Sometimes just having it sit there, my tongue, taking my fingers, massaging my cheeks, which is this lower middle picture, and then slowly opening my jaw while I'm massaging. So that's the picture right here. That basic work does help relieve TMJ um, pain. It will not take away TMJ. That's a structural issue, but it helps relieve the pain. Internal, you're going in and you're working the actual joint. And then taking your cheeks, internal and external, and kind of raking them from back to front by squeezing your cheeks between your two fingers. A woman named Marla comes to see me regularly for the past 25 years. Her chiropractor actually sent her to me because her chiropractor did not know TMJ work. And I had met her chiropractor once and gave her the work. So uh, I see her regularly every three to six months. She actually drives from Escondido up to see me and then you know, hangs out in LA and then goes back home. So it helps take away her headache, helps loosen up her neck, and then also helps relieve her jaw pain. For pregnancy massage, it is specialized training. There are different points of the woman's body while pregnant that you would want to be aware of. As I've already said, the calf and the hand point it is recommended again not to get a massage until the beginning of the first or the second trimester. And that's because the body may still think of the baby as a toxin. There are specialized pillows. So the mom is pregnant, but she's laying face down and you can see the height of this pillow allows for the belly to drop down. It is supported between um, her pelvis and her belly under the breast, there's a support beam there and then the support of the shoulders. And frankly, I find it very comfortable. <laughs> there are some of the points to be uh, avoided. You wanna block, so her leg on the top picture is blocked, that means positioned with support. And it is contraindicated in high-risk pregnancies, so please have your doctor's permission before getting massage. I do labor induction. I actually induced my own OBGYN, and I get hired to induce through the two points that you see here, the hand point. It is considered a pain point as well as the gastrocnemius is considered. You hold this pain point, and it helps the induction of labor. It is not guaranteed, nothing is guaranteed in life, but it does help trigger it. I personally induce my own labor through acupuncture and holding this point. As I said, I get hired to do inductions and so far I've had success with everybody. Now pre-pregnancy, if somebody's trying to get pregnant, these are the same points that you're gonna go to. Tops of the traps. Gastrocnemius, the pain point here, on a table supporting the body. Or if you don't have a table, you can actually lean over any table, such as a dining room table or a counter or the back of a couch and do the massage. Stacy? Yes. We have um, six more minutes, so I just wanted yes. to tell you. And also, there is one question. So far, um, sure, go for it. Let's go to the questions. It's about if there's an Achilles tendon issue. This was when mm -hmm. you were talking about um, massaging in the gastroxoleus. Would it mm -hmm. be wise to avoid the mid calf area? I think it was the trigger point um, slide. Well, I certainly wouldn't hold the point unless your doctor or orthopedist encourages that. When there's injury, the first thing I do is get doctor's permission before working that area. 
because I don't want to encourage somebody to get work and have it injure even farther. So I would encourage somebody to go to um, their MD, get permission. If it is an injury such as that, I really would, it, hopefully they're seeing an orthopedist or a physical therapist. As a nurse, I would want an order. As a client, I would only do Swedish in that area. And I would pay attention to any pain. Oh, we got another one. Where can we learn more about self-healing massage techniques? This is a great topic. Um, there are tons of places that you can go. Local, uh, local massage schools have them. There's YouTube videos that you can do. You can contact me. Um, there's, you can go take massage classes. At, well, all right, so it's COVID right now. It's kind of hard to go and take classes. So uh, it, it's, it really is hard in the moment. YouTube does have a lot of great online how to help yourself um, techniques that are going on. Soothing long strokes and effleurage, which is soothing and long, keeping in mind that you're going towards the heart with uh, any heavy pressure, light pressure always away from the heart. I hope that answers. Uh, Parks and Rec sometimes have classes. Again, it's hard right now in COVID. I don't know of anybody who's holding in-person classes locally. And I put on three videos, one for the jaw work, one for hand massage, and hand forearm uh, for self-care. It was purely me doing it to me. Hi, I'm going to show you today how to do a jaw massage. A lot of times when you're working, you'll find yourself clenching your teeth and you can get headaches from this. So the first thing to do is make sure your hands are clean. So today I'm using a little hand sanitizer and you just clean them. Now, no, there's two ways. You can do it exterior or you can do it interior and exterior. So the first thing you're going to want to do is if you have a pencil, put it between your teeth. That'll just help you from clenching down. If you don't, you always have something handy, your tongue. So you'll just place it between your teeth and leave it there during this process. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you what to do. I'm gonna be massaging the exterior first. I will do some pinpoints and let you know when I stop. And um, then I'll go interior and show you that as well. So to start with, your hands are clean. Put your tongue in its place. So you may feel some bumps or knots. Uh, it's lactic acid buildup. So if you find any of that, you can just press on it and make circular motions. You can do it both sides simultaneously. Or you can just do it one side at a time. Now, if you find that knot, you're going to push in and hold the point to your comfort level. Everybody's a little different. It's going to be tight and it may be a little sore for you. So now you hold that pressure and you're going to slowly open your jaw while pushing. And close it slowly. All at the same time, you're going to press that pressure is as to your comfort level. Make some circular motions and do it again. So find the middle of that knot, press, hold that pressure, slowly open your jaw. And close and circle. Now you're going to go to the back of your jaw around your ear and you're going to slide forward with pressure to your comfort level. Everybody's going to be a little different. 
You may have looked a little silly, but that's okay. You're going to go back and do that again. And then go a little lower and do it again. On that second lower one, you may have feelings of different knots and you can go back in there, find that new knot, add your pressure, hold it for a moment, open your jaw slowly. and close and circles and pull forward and release. Now, if you notice my thumbs are underneath my jawline, so either with your thumbs or with your two fingers, you can massage that jawline underneath. You can bring it forward And then follow the jawline again. Bring it forward. Then next you're going to go to your scalenes and your sternocleidomastoid, which is the muscle that starts around here and goes forward and ends on your clavicle. So you'll find it. You can just kind of move your neck around. And you'll find a ropey muscle. You can just pull it. Put it between your fingers and roll. So again, going down. When you get to your clavicle, you can take your finger and roll in. So you're on the clavicle and roll in. Just slightly moving back and forth. Kind of loosening those muscles up at the attachments. And one long soothing stroke and down. Now to go interior, let me clean my hand a little. You're still going to do these pressures on the outside and the circles and the jaw holding and then opening and closing. Then you're going to go in, make your fingers in a cup and you're going to pull your cheek so you'll feel the interior and exterior of the cheek at the same time. And you pull. You don't need to pull off like that. I, it just slipped out on me, but sometimes it'll slip out on you as well. And that's okay. So you just keep on raking it forward. Slow, soothing, long strokes and effleurage. You pulling it. You can go into the back on your joint and take your finger and swipe it down. Um, that one's not the most comfortable at all, so you're going to open your jaw all the way. You're going to put your finger straight back between your teeth until you hit the joint and you'll just pull down. Not the easiest to catch on video. So, again, that is great for a sore jaw. If you grind or clench your teeth at night, this is fantastic to help loosen up that jaw. If you have TMJ, it's good to help with that. Um, it can be painful though with TMJ, so just be aware of that. If somebody has a episode at the moment where they're in pain, just lightly go through that. You can put ice in those same areas and do the same massage with an ice cube, and that'll help out. All right, hope that helps. Thank you. Hi, we're gonna do a hand massage right now. Some of it's for comfort and some of it is for a headache. And believe it or not, 
your headache point is in your hand. It's from Eastern Medicine and it is a pain point. It is considered a pain point and it should be painful um, to your comfort level. So keep that in mind. Before I show this to you, uh, if you are pregnant or possible of being pregnant, please do not do this until you're at minimum 38 weeks along. It is also an induction point. So I don't wanna induce any pregnancies uh, by accident. And the likelihood of that varies on the person. So just keep in mind, if you are pregnant, please do not do the headache point. So we'll start off with clean hands. Again, hand sanitizer today. Make sure your hands are clean. You don't know where you've been touching it, even if you just moved your chair. So please be aware. I am using lotion. You do not need to use lotion at all for this. I am using a coconut oil and argon. I'm not showing you the company because I don't own rights to this. So I am not promoting it. Well, we'll see if this works. All right. So just take a little, I only have a little dab, rub it on your hands. And for a basic massage, rub your hands. I'm doing it with some slight pressure. So it's not just lotion applying. I'm actually grabbing and I'm giving my fingers a massage. Each one. I'm doing a slight twist as I come up off of the fingers and it's very relaxing. If you come between here, there are some sinus points. So if your sinuses are a little stuffy, you can massage here. All I'm doing is I'm pulling down. I have applied pressure and I'm just stroking it. This also feels great. So in between your fingers. I'm not teaching reflexology at the moment. There is a map of the hand for reflexology points and I'm not teaching that at the moment. You can come and all I'm doing is rolling like this on both sides. And down. Then I need to also do the sides. And down. And come to the next finger. The, that was the side. And now the fatty part. And continue up each finger. I know I didn't do the fatty parts and the sides on all, both of those, but that's okay. And come across the top of the pads. With my thumb, I'm applying pressure. Now you can take your palm and work inside here. If you do a lot of typing or you're holding a pen a lot, these are great points to massage through here. You're getting your metacarpals. There's also some great muscles in here that help your hands go like that. And come across and do the other one. So then you can walk your hands Meaning you're going to have your finger shimmy between your metacarpals. Now your metacarpals are the bones that are linked in through here. So I'm going in between those and either inching or pulling both with some pressure and just getting the blood circulating through there. So now we're gonna go into the headache point. So again, ladies, if you happen to be pregnant, please uh, don't do this point 
When you're ready to induce pregnancy, talk to your practitioner because there are ways that you can do that to this point, but we're not going through that right now. But for those with a headache, this is called a pain point. You're gonna take your pinch and you're actually gonna pinch it. You're gonna hold in there. You're gonna roll around until you feel the belly of the muscle. So just like you're trying to find your belly, you're finding the belly or the fattiest part of the muscle that's in here. And you're gonna pinch. It should hurt you it, to your comfort level. So keep that in mind. And you're gonna hold that point and do some deep breathing. So take a deep breath in. Hold that point down. Exhale. Keep, keep another deep breath in. Exhale. So that whole time you're holding that point and release. So you may hold that point for a few minutes to your comfort level again. Uh, you may feel the headache going away. Does it work on every single headache? No, because we get headaches for all different reasons. So understanding what causes your headache is key. You know that a lot of times headaches are dehydration or lack of protein. I am not a doctor, so I'm not telling you what your headache is. This is an Eastern medicine philosophy of pulling headaches. So again, you hold the point, you take deep breaths, and exhale slowly. Hope that helps. So an extension to the hand massage is if you do a lot of typing or holding of phones, uh, other devices, if you do a 10 key for your work or you're holding small objects a lot for whatever reason or you use your hands, you may get things like carpal tunnel or numbness and tingling in the fingers. So part of the massage that I recommend is your forearm. So I'm gonna take some lotion put it on my forearm. Since I'm massaging myself, I can go ahead and do that. I already cleaned my hands. I'm going to massage it in. Now this is a effleurage. It is a long soothing stroke. And right now it's just like putting on your lotion, but I'm applying more pressure. So I'm taking my whole hand and I'm squeezing as I'm going up long and soothing. I come up over the elbow. Sorry, it's windy outside. <laughs> and I pull up, I make a circular motion, and then back down. I do a little stretch as I'm pulling on the hand, so it opens up the carpal tunnel. I come up and around. As I'm going down, I have my wrist in my hands, and I'm just pulling forward. It's just a slight uh, elongation of my arm, I'm not tugging on it. It's just as if I'm kind of extending it through my hand pull. Now I come up with just the fingers. My thumb is underneath only for support because of the position I'm in. But you can see I'm going a little deeper. And then I'm gonna massage up here. And roll forward and come down and go back up and off. So I'm going to come up again. I'm going to go in and roll. And then I'm going to come down. I'm using my thumb on the other side to do the pressure there. And coming off and then off. So I keep the pressure all the way until I come off the fingers. It's it's one fluid pressure, even though your fingers have a, a different motion going on when you're making the circles. The circles are just cr increasing your circulation. So coming up, making your circles, and coming back down. And off. And there you go. You should start feeling more circulation going on. You can do the hand and the forearm, and then back to the hand, and then come off. 
I know a lot of what I talked about has to do with doing it to others, but in the the spirit of self-care, really everything I showed you, you can do to yourself with the exception of that sciatic relief. But um, stretching helps for sciatica, which I'm happily willing to show anybody stretches on that. So thank you all for joining. So